Okay. So, if I'm solving by graphing, how many lines do I need? If there's two equations, I need two lines. What if there's three equations? I would need three lines. What if there's six equations? I would need six lines. And if all those six lines go through one point, that's the solution, yes? yes. So in this, for this warm-up, I've only given you two, right? But on a test, maybe I give you four, all right? So x equals three. Where is x equals three? One, two, three. There it is, yes? And x is always three. So what kind of line do I have to draw there? Straight up and down, because x is always 3. Now, how can I graph that one? You guys just did a test on this. Go down to negative 2, and then what's my slope? Negative 2 thirds, which is rise over run, yes? So I got to go down to, there's my negative rise, and now my positive run, which is what direction? Right. One, two, three. And there I hit the red line. What is that point? Three, negative four. Everybody good? One mark for all of these. Next one. How do I graph the red one? Where do I go? Positive two. What's my slope? Negative one, so down one, and then where? Right one. right one. For as long as I need to go in both directions, yes? Now you guys know that since this is a math class and we're practicing, this is going to be an easy one, right? The answer is going to be an exact point. I'm not going to give you a fraction one on graphing, okay? So I've only done the points. I'm not even going to draw the line. How do I draw the blue one? Where do I go? Negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and then a slope of what? Negative 6, which would mean I would need to drop 6. That's going to take me off the graph, though, so can I do it? No, where should I go? Up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then where? Left 1. Oh, hits there. There was already a red dot. So what is that point? Negative 1. Three. That's it. Number three. Graph the first one. Go to negative four. And I need a slope of negative one. Then I go to positive one. And I need a slope of positive two-thirds. Now, you guys are smart kids. If my first line went down here, should I go up from here to find where they cross? No, I got to go down, don't I? But I still need a positive slope. So I have to go down two and then where? Left three, so they are both negative. Understand? And of course, down two, left three, it's right there, and it's negative three, negative one. And finally, four. Why did I put four last? Because it required you to do algebra. And what did you need to do on the rest of this review? Algebra. So it gets you set up for the rest of the review. Point one, you have many ways you could graph this, right? But the easiest way is to go y, 2y equals negative 7x plus 8. y equals negative 7 over 2x plus 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, no! It doesn't fit. What do we do? Well, we could be up at 8, couldn't we? Because we don't need that dot, do we? And then negative 7 over 2. So down 7 would take me down to 1. And then what direction? Right two. Agreed? Okay. And the other one is 2y equals negative x minus 4. y equals negative 1 half x minus 2. So I go down to negative 2. 1, 2. Negative 1 half. So down 1. Now, you know that this red line has to go this way, yeah? Yo. Yo. 
Didn't I divide 8 by 2? Holy crap, I forgot to divide 8 by 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. Woo! Good thing you guys were all here to catch me. Phew! Now, that makes it better. Down 1, over 2, and there's the dot. 2, negative 3. Now, how easy was it for me to make that mistake when I'm rushing? Super easy, right? How many of you are going to rush on your test tomorrow? Every single one of you. Should I have made that mistake? If I were writing a test and not trying to talk about it the whole time, would I have made that mistake? Probably not, because I would be taking my time. And then what would I do at the end? I would check it. I don't need to check these because I got 30 of you looking out for every one of my mistakes because you think it's fun when I screw up, right? You don't check for your own mistakes, but if I put a negative in the wrong spot, oh yeah, right? And everybody's laughing because you all know it's true. If I ask you to find your own mistake, oh, it's perfect. All right, moving along. Substitution. You got a couple of choices. This guy's already set up, right? So I got negative 3x minus 2x plus 14. Because y is that. Minus y equals 6. Then I just solve it. What is it? Negative 3x. Distribute that. Negative 2x. Minus... 14, right, equals 6, negative 5x minus 14 equals 6, negative 5x equals 20, and x equals minus 4. If x is minus 4, what can I put right there? Minus 4, y equals 2 times negative 4 plus 14. Negative 8 plus 14, 6. What's the answer? Here's a problem. Have I given the solution yet? No. Do I have the solution written there? Yeah. How do I actually give the solution, though? Negative 4, 6. You need the point on the graph. Everybody good? Okay, what about this one? Is it already set up for you? Why, Kirsten? Why is this already set up for me? Because Y is by itself. So that means anywhere up here that I see what letter? Y, I can put this, right? Now that's going to screw some of you up because there's a negative. Negative 4X minus 5. What goes in here? Negative 2x minus 3 equals negative 15. Get rid of the brackets. Negative 4x. Now, what does this negative do there and there? Make changes their sign, right? Because if one of them was positive, it would become negative, right? So plus 10x plus 15 equals negative 15, right? Negative 4 plus 10 is 6x plus 15 equals negative 15. 6x equals negative 30. What is x equal? Negative 5. Where does that negative 5 go now? Right there. So y equals negative 2 times negative 5 minus 3. What's negative 2 times negative 5? Positive 10 minus 3. Seven. Have I done the solution yet? What is the solution? Negative five, seven. Should I check? Doesn't hurt. What's negative two times negative five? Positive 10, positive 10 minus three is seven. We knew that one was right because that's the one we just did. So I checked this one. What's negative four times negative five? Positive 20. What's five times seven? 35. What's 20 minus 35? Negative 15. So are we right? Yes. And these two 
are still set up for you. Do I need to do them? No? Somebody give me one of your answers and we'll check. Somebody volunteer an answer. Cool, to number nine. Eight, negative five. Let's check. What's two times eight? Negative five, eight, okay. Negative five, eight. What's two times negative five? Negative 10. What's negative 10 plus 18? Eight. Why is eight? So are we good in the first one? Yep. What's negative five times negative five? 25. What's 25 minus eight? 17. So are we good on the second one? Yes. Good? Okay. Who's going to volunteer this one to me? Three and negative four, Emma says. Emma says three and negative four. Let's check. What's two times three? Six. What's six minus ten? Negative four. We're right. What's negative three times three? Negative nine. What's e negative five times negative four? Negative twenty. Negative nine plus twenty is eleven, so we're right. Good job. Is everybody good with substitution? What if it wasn't set up perfectly for you? What would you do? Algebra to get y by itself. Have we done that a million times in a previous unit to get the slope-intercept form? Have we? So is that new to us, getting y by itself? And is it any different if we want to get x by itself? No. All right, elimination. I want to do one, and then we'll do the check method for the other one. Okay? Remember, in elimination, you want to get one of the two coefficients the same. Okay? Does it matter which one you work with? No. I'm going to work with x's. So what is the number for 3 and 5 and x? What do I need to do? I need the, the lowest common multiple of 3 and 5. What is it? 15. So I need this to be 15s, don't I? What will make this first one 15? 5. 15x plus 20y equals 5. What will make the second one 15? 3. Now, I should do negative here, shouldn't I? So I get opposite signs. That's the easiest way, I think, to do elimination. So this becomes negative 15x, negative 9y, and positive 39, yes? Now all I do is I add them together. That disappears. What's 20 plus negative 9? 20 plus negative 9. It's 11. 11y. And what's 5 plus 39? 44. So what does y equal? 4. Now where can that go? Anywhere I see a y. Does it matter which equation I use? No. But I have to use that whole equation. Right, Brandy? I can't cross over, can I? If I start with this green one, I got to put the 4 in for this one. So I'm going to do the green one. 5x plus, what's 3 times 4? 12 equals negative 13. 5x equals negative 25, x equals negative 5. Negative 5, 4. Who will volunteer this answer for me? Negative 2, 3. Let's check. What's 4 times negative 2? Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. Good. What's 2 times negative 2? Negative 4. Negative 4 plus 9 is positive 5. Good. Everybody feeling good? All right, now, these questions scare you guys. Why? Words. In math class, what is math all about? Numbers. And numbers do what for us? Why do we have numbers? Nobody can tell me why we have numbers? To count, yes? Right? I'm a farmer. I have some hay. Do you want some hay? I would like some hay. How much hay would you like? Some. Well, here is some. 
That is too much. I do not need that much hay. Well, how much hay would you like? Some. Less than that. Okay, how about this much? No, that is not enough. I need more. Why do we have numbers? To count, yes? So, all these words are only there to tell us how to count, yes? So what in this question are we counting? We're counting money, right? How much money we started with, and we're counting how much money we get, correct? So how much money did we start with? How much money did I start with? $1,000. Do I know how much money I spent on each investment? No, so those are unknowns, yes? So what do we give in math when we don't know something? Right, some hay. I would like X amount of hay. A plus B equals 1,000, right? So that's the money we started with. We earned 68 bucks, which was 5% of A. How do I write 5% in math class? 0 0.05 A plus 0 0.08 B. Now, what don't I like about that? Yes, I'm going to get rid of it. No matter what. Why? Right. It's two decimal places. I've got to find time. If I multiply A and B by 100, what do I got to do to C? So I'm going to multiply everything by 100. So what do I get? 5A plus 8B. Now, I just do substitution or elimination, yes? Who makes the decision? You do. Whatever you are good at. Do I care? No. What would I use here? Yeah, I would use substitution. Why? Because I got two isolated variables, don't I? Right? Because A equals 1,000 minus B, or B equals 1,000 minus A. Then I would solve. What's your answer? Somebody give me their answer. <coughs> A is 400, and B is 600, yes? Okay, let's check. 5 times 4 is 2,000, 8 times 6 is 4,800. Is 2,000 and 4,800 6,800? Yes, so we're right. Is everybody good? What scares you here is you can't read the question because you don't know about investing, do you? Right? That's why I put it here to show you it's not about whether you know anything about investing or not, it's about what you're counting. Right? No solution. If there is no solution, what do we know? The lines are parallel, which means what? Same slope. So this line right here is 2y equals negative x plus 6. y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. So if there's no solution, y equals what? Negative 1 half x plus what number? anything except what? Anything except 3. Plus B, and B can't equal 3. Because if B equals 3, it's two lines right on top of each other. And how many times do they touch? All the time. Oh, wait a minute, what's the next question? So it would be Y equals negative 1 half X plus what? Three, because that's the same line and they'll be right on top of each other everybody good okay this question also screws people up what are the two things I'm counting in a rectangle what are the two things we count length and width yes L W 
right? What do I know about L and W? L plus W is not 20 dohoyan. 2L plus 2W is 20 because there's two widths and two lengths. Could you do W plus L equals 10? Yes. What else do you know? The length L is equals 3 more than the width. How do I write 3 more than an unknown number? The unknown number width Plus how much, Emily? Three. Am I already set up for substitution? L equals that. What's your answer, Mr. Radna? I couldn't be better. My motivating is. I I get a lot of that. No, I got it all set up. Seriously. W equals 3.5. If W is 3.5, what's X? What's length? Length is 3 meters greater than the width. 6.5. L equals 6.5. W equals 3.5. Is that equal 10? Have we ever had a question come out to a decimal before? No. But did we do our math right? So are we confident? No. All of you would be like, no, oh, it can't be a decimal. So what would you do to check it? You would go back right here. Is 3.5 plus 3, 6.5? Yes. Is 7 plus 13, 20? Yes. So you did it right, even though it came out to a decimal. That's it? That's it. What are the two things I'm counting in number 7? People and money, right? So I've got adults and I've got kids. How many people came to the play? So adults plus kids must be 200. How do I write that as an equation? A plus K equals 200. How much money did each adult pay? 10. 10A plus how much did each kid pay? 6K equaled how much money? 1680 and then you solve right I'm too lazy to solve it what is it somebody has an answer what is it for number seven how many adults came to the play and how many kids eight hundred plus six times twelve seventy two 720 and 800. I don't get that. Adults is 120. And kids is 80. Now, that's 1,240. That's correct. And finally, because the bell is about to ring, I'm not allowed to solve them. Do these guys cross once? You know they cross once. Why? Slopes are different. Just from looking, right? Because you know that to get y by itself, I'm going to have to have negative 2 thirds, and I'm going to have to have positive 2 thirds, aren't I? So this guy crosses once. What about this guy? Infinite. Why? They're all times three. It's the exact same line, isn't it? Right? What about this one? I only have to check slope, right? So this guy is negative is five over two. And what's this guy? 10 over 4. Hey! What do we know about those two? They're the same. So are these slopes parallel? Are they ever going to touch? 
Well, you better check. 6 divided by 4, 12 divided by 5. Those are different numbers, aren't they? So they're going to have different y-intercepts, so they're never going to touch. Everybody good? Test tomorrow, systems. This stuff. Did I screw up? I might have. Let's check. Before we go, we got a couple of seconds. This guy is going to be five, negative 2y equals negative 5x. y equals 5 halves, right? This guy is negative 10x, negative, oh, I lie. Make 4y, 10x. 10 over 4, 5 halves. We still okay? Then, of course, this guy would have been divided by 2, so it would have been plus 6, and this guy would have been divided by uh, 4, so it would have been 1.5. So they're different. I think I made them both negative or something, but the point was the slopes were the same, right? Is everybody good up? Test tomorrow. I know it's last block on a Friday. I apologize. Tomorrow is Friday. You have this class last block. So your test is last block on a Friday. I apologize. Oh, good news. Josh is in the library after school if you are at all in trouble. Remember, you also have a cumulative on everything to do with graphing sometime after tomorrow. So if you are a little dodgy on graphing, what would be a real good thing to do this afternoon in the library today? Go graph with Josh. Sounds like a great TV show. Graphing with Josh. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do too well. Although you guys are such clowns on the internet, I would probably say, you'll never believe what happened when I graphed with Josh. Ooh, clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. See you. I'll do my best, Jacob, you too. Thanks, man. See ya. Holy crap, it's hot in here. Well, how will we solve that problem? I'm with me. Bye, Al. Okay. Ooh, doggy. Sure, I trust you.